Hello everyone, uh, my name is Ruben Stemme and I'm going to do this tribute speech on my mother, Nina Stemme. Uh, now the reason why I chose to do this speech on her is not just simply because she's influenced me a lot throughout my life and my childhood. Uh, it's not because of all the valuable life lessons and knowledge she's given me, nor is it because uh, she's been by my side every day and been able to comfort me uh, through my daily life. Because frankly, uh, the latter is not really the case. Because of her work, uh, she's been away a lot through my childhood. Um, but I see this as something positive about it. Now, the true reason for this tribute towards my mother is uh, rather the fact that though she had, even though she hasn't been with me uh, my entire life and uh, been home, uh, she's uh, she's been able to. She's managed to, to give me and my family so much and brought, provided us with opportunities and things that I'm eternally grateful for. Uh, she's given me life beyond the normal, normal, as well as shown me that hard work and dedication truly pays off. And for that, I want to show my gratitude. So who is my mother? My mother, Nina Stemme, was born the 11th of May 1963 in Stockholm, Sweden. She was raised in an average working, working class family uh, along with two sisters and later on a brother. Her parents, my grandparents, were hard-working and quite strict people that at an early age taught out the qualities of discipline, uh, respect, humility, not taking things from granted, as well as the benefits of hard work and perseverance. These are all attributes that I think have, have helped her a lot throughout her career uh, and helped her reach where she is today. Uh, as a child, my mother was. As a child, music was always important for my mother. Attending a high-profile music and chorus school uh, in Stockholm, as well as playing the piano and the violin, music has always been the way she was headed. At first, she thought she, she thought she wanted to become a violinist, but then she discovered the capability of her voice. Uh, after, after finishing high school, she went on to study business admi administration uh, and economy at the University of Stockholm parallel to taking opera courses at the Stockholm Opera Studio. studio. Uh, she then went on to, to have her author de debut as a character Carabino in Mozart's The Marriage of Figaro in Cortona, Italy, uh, 1989, after which she finished her opera studies at the University College of Opera in Stockholm. Since then, my mother, the dramatic soprano Nina Semmer, has gone on to become one of the most famous opera singers in her category in the world. Uh, singing at some of the, of the best opera houses there are. Becoming what she is today has not become easy though, and as I've witnessed her grow uh, throughout my life, I've also seen all the hard work, perseverance and sacrifices she's had to make to, to get to where she is today. And for that I truly admire her. The fact that she still managed to create a family and raise three children and create a wonderful life for all of us uh, is something I really got to her for. Ever since I was a little boy, I've always had a lot of questions. Smaller kids tend to do. Sometimes these questions might have been of a more simple nature and sometimes maybe a bit more philosophical. Most of it was probably just me throwing out random questions in there, wanting simple answers. But no matter the question and no matter the location, my mother would always make me think by myself and ask me the question instead. Uh, and this made me, made me think more and gave me broader perspective. And it's something that I, I, even though it might not be the, the biggest thing and the greatest thing, it's something that has really helped me gain perspective. And I really think myself before answering something or looking at something new, looking at it from a different perspective. Uh, the fact that my parents, and especially my mother, uh, has been working and traveling a lot throughout my life is something that I'm actually thankful for. Uh, not only has this given, given me the opportunity to travel all around the world, seeing different cultures, cities, and of course operas, uh, this has also given me, an, according to me, very uh, valuable world perspective and understanding for the world as a whole, not just the country that I'm from. But their traveling also has given me is the ability to take care of myself and basically at times to be living by myself. Uh, which has prepared me for, for example, this exchange here and made me be able to be alright and 
survive without, without having my family close to me, which is, according to me, a good, good quality to have throughout life. Now, even though this speech is primarily about my mother, I would also like to quickly mention my father, uh, whom I look up to as much as, I, as my mother. My father, Bengt Harald Folke Gumer, uh, worked as a set designer for Auckland Theatre. The reason why I want to pay, pay tribute to him as well is because he's been the backbone of my family when my, when my mother has been away. Uh, he supported me and my sisters tremendously. Uh, even though this has meant having to stay home in Sweden and uh, sometimes giving up the uh, uh, working opportunities outside of Sweden that he might have wanted to take, um, he's, he's always been extremely positive and almost never have I seen him sad or discontent. The reason why I admire my father so much is because even though he started off not really knowing what he wanted to become and not having the easiest route, um, he worked his way up and found his true passion and made his life in something that he's truly great, great at. He never really followed any certain lines or directions um, and still ended up exactly where he wanted to be. So therefore, thank you Dad as well for showing me that life uh, can't really be predicted uh, or directed. And that sometimes you just have to work hard and that trusting will happen and things will work out no matter what. I believe that my parents are truly amazing people. My mother with her stubbornness, perseverance, dedication, encouragement, constant joy and hard-working mentality. My father with his extreme positivity, his relaxed but still devoted view of life, his enthusiasm about almost everything, and his started from the bottom now we're here mentality. <laughs> <laughs> they, both have, have, they both have sub subconsciously taught me so much and positively affected me uh, in a, more ways than they can imagine in almost everything. Uh, as well as giving me the best life I could ever dream, dream of. Even though they both haven't physically been by my side uh, through my, my life, I'm still very happy uh, with the choices they made and the priorities they chose for their life and for me and my sisters. I think that I can safely say that we're all very sat satisfied with the opportunities we've been presented and I'm eternally grateful for what I've got with my family and with my parents. So thank you very much for everything you've done for me, Mom and Dad. I love you. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Body, and I'm here to give a tribute speech about my dad. James Bobby, the man sitting in the back. Busy guy, yeah. Before he started, I'm like, oh, I have to invite my dad to the tribute speech. So I do what any 18 year old boy does wait until 10 minutes before the period starts and call my dad up on the phone, like, hey, dad, uh, what you doing this afternoon? <laughs> and then here he is, and he made it. So thank you for coming along, dad. <laughs> okay, so today he's a supervisor at Livingston High School for the tech ed department and business department. He's a professor at Kane University, big gardener, <laughs> big garden with a big gardener. And then he's a mentor for all kinds of different clubs at Livingston High School. His past was just as impressive as what he does now. Mm -hmm. He was a rock star. He's the man with the uh, funny glass and mustache in the middle. And then there he is driving his race car on the left. And he's, all of these things that he's done have inspired me to be who I really am today. He's a caring, thoughtful, practical, helpful, and cheerful person. He earned all kinds of awards in his field. And just to show how influential of a person he is, he was a, when we get off those couple days, that we had off last month for the teachers convention. He's one of those guys who goes to the teachers convention and talks to teachers. He coached his robotics team to the world tournament and he, had, he coached his coach of team that got 600 miles per gallon on a car. But all of these traits that he has, the one that's most important to me is his perseverance. There's all kinds of stuff that I can say that are like, wow, that's pretty impressive. But the one that'll set the mood the most is 
he got to level 850 on Candy Crush, <laughs> he would, other achievements that he had is building a 11 second drag car. He's like, hey, I want a car that goes fast. So why not build the fastest car, faster than any production car in that time period? My mom's like, hey, the kitchen's a little small. Can we like do a small renovation? My dad's like, I'm just gonna knock down the house and build a new one. <laughs> the doctor's like, hey, you can, you should exercise a little more. And he's like, okay, starts running and decides I'm gonna go run four marathons. And then it's like, hey, hiking's pretty cool. Let's go climb some mountains. And so that's what we do on vacation. And he does all kinds of stuff along those lines. And it's just impacts who I am. It's when you have a project and it's not, let's just get the project done. It's how can I do the project, do the project correctly, and move it forward. Building the house, it's not like, oh, I need to, first of all, it's building a house. Second of all, it's, I'm not just going to go and knock down the house. It's, hey, Andrew, what are you doing today after school at 3 o'clock? I'm like, I don't know. I'll probably be coming home. Why? He's like, well, I got something cool for you. And then he, next thing I know, I come home, and there's a uh, back hole in the front yard. He sits me on his lap, and he goes through and knocks down the whole entire house to the confusion of the whole town. <laughs> and it was a good time. And then so I was with him as he built the whole entire house. He would show me how to do everything the right way. That was the guy screwing it all the when you flip the light switch, you got the little screws on that plate. I was the guy who would put in all those screws and help him chase wires through the wall. And it, it seems stupid, but it really helped when I'm going through working on larger projects of my own now. It's practical experience and it's just nice. When he was doing that, it wasn't just do it. It's like, oh, he's still working a 8 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock teaching job. He'd wake up at 5 in the morning, build a house until 7, get ready for work, go to work, come home at 5, work on the house until the wee hours of the morning, and they say, like, oh, I have work tomorrow, and then go to sleep and do it again for weeks on end. But like I said before, doing stuff the right way. It's not just like, oh, just turn the screwdriver, and when it comes out, you're doing it the right way. It's, you have your fingers curled, and it comes out change the brakes on your car. It's, the car squeaks, not go take it and pay 50 bucks to the people down the road. It's, hey Andrew, go out in the garage and go change the brakes. So then he's out there teaching me on Sunday morning when I'd much rather be laying in bed how to change the brakes on my car. And it's change the exhaust manifold and what to do when you have a screw and then there's all of a sudden just a big hole where you're supposed to be taking it out and what you got to do. And then most recently when I planted my car in a ditch, redoing the whole entire front end and now it's a Good adventure. But most importantly, we did all of these with a smile on our faces. Without him, I'm 100% sure I wouldn't be where I am today, going off to engineering school, proud of my practical experience, because without him, I really don't know what I'd be doing today. I just want to say thank you to my dad for everything he's done for me, and I love you, Dad. Thank you. Hi, how's everybody doing today? My name is Bobby Samara, and today I'll be honoring my dad, Richard Samara. Do you have a role model in your life? Someone who, since you can, uh, ever since you can remember, has loved you, helped you grow, coached you? There's a man in my life who inspires me every day with his kindness, attitude, passion, work ethic. That man is my father, Richard Samara. He's my greatest role model. He teaches me every day by leading by example. He works as a financial advisor at Private Advisor Group in Morristown and greatly cares about what he does. He is an amazing person, an amazing father, husband, son, brother, uncle, cousin, and friend. Above all, he's one of the most caring people you'll, you'll ever meet. Today, my father deserves recognition for his caring traits. My dad's the type of person who would offer and jump up to go get some more food if it would make us happy. The kind of coach who has tried to change Little League rules to make sure everybody on his team got a fair shot at seeing the field. He's the type of husband that does anything he can to go out of his way and make my mom smile. 
People who have met him agree he's an extremely caring person. He's great with pretty much everyone he's met and has built great relationships through work, school, sports, and socializing. He's extremely successful at everything he puts his mind to and is always looking to improve. Upon asking my mom what he was like when they first met, the story that she told touched me. At the time, my mom and dad worked at the same bank and they began to like each other and started dating. This is a special story because at the time, my mom struggled and had little money and was just doing what she could to get by. Following them dating a while, my father's boss told him that they could no longer see each other due to the fact that they worked at the same bank. In fear of the consequences, my dad and mom ended things. But soon after, on Halloween, my dad showed up at my mom's doorstep in a doctor costume as a surprise and insisted that they kept dating and go out that night. I'm glad they did. <laughs> my mom said that my dad was one of the most compassionate and caring people my mom has ever met. My dad likes to, and our family, enjoys giving to charitable organizations. My dad enjoys helping others in need. He's a very caring person, and he likes to give back to those <coughs> who are struggling. My dad also does many things for the community, including the countless hours he put into Little League coaching. Things like these just speak volumes for the type of person my father is. He is a person of great determination, compassion, courage, and caring qualities. He's the greatest man I'll ever know, and there's nobody that I'd rather have as a dad. I hope to mirror the qualities he's instilled in me and my brothers. I love you, Dad. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dan Serna, and today I'm here to pay tribute to my dad, Paul Serna. He's sitting right up here next to my mom, and I just want you to know, Mom, you were a very close second. <laughs> my dad was born on January 31st in Brooklyn, New York. He grew up there, went to Severian High School, and then Fordham University. After this, he went to medical school and is now a pediatrician for some of the medical group. He works hard to provide a nice life for my mom, my three siblings, myself, and our dog, Shelby. <laughs> so we all have role models, people who inspire us, how we act day to day, how we handle our problems and face our challenges. So for me, this person is my dad. He inspired me to do a lot of things in my life. For example, wrestling. I would never have started wrestling if it wasn't for my dad. He wrestled in high school, and this led me to start wrestling from a young age, and I still continue to do it every day, no matter how much it stinks to not eat and have to cut all that weight, I still do it. <laughs> He's also inspired me to go in, to want to go into the field of medicine. I plan on going to college on a pre-med track and eventually go to medical school, hopefully. <laughs> so a typical day for my dad starts off with him waking up early to walk the dog, getting everybody ready for school, driving my sister to school, spending a long day seeing patients, working hard, sometimes going to meetings, coming home, eating dinner, helping clean, checking homework, and getting ready for the next day. After this, he walks the dog again, <laughs> watches some TV and goes to bed. But he does it all with a smile on his face and makes it all seem so easy. He works so hard to provide such a nice life for my family and I. My dad, has one of the strongest moral compasses of anyone I've ever met. He's the prime example of always doing the right thing, no matter who's looking. Um, the other day, I was pulling out of the lot, and I got in a little accident. It was a love tap, a love scratch, whatever you call it. I waited to find the owner and fill her in on what had happened. She commended me for doing the right thing and waiting, but never for a second had I thought about leaving. And these morals were instilled in me by my, by my dad. And I thank you very much for that. I have another story. My grandmother, my mom's mom, always used to call my dad St. Paul because of his kind and helping nature. He was always there to help 
fix things around the house, or give medical advice to one of my mom's five siblings, or one of his own, or other siblings. <laughs> and that's just so nice. He's the real handyman. He knows how to fix anything around the house, and is always willing to teach us how to fix stuff. Which leads me to my next story. He's a true natural teacher, is what I like to call him. He works, um, excuse me. He teaches us a lot of things. I find myself in conversations with my dad that wind up with him talking to me about the human body or how to fix something around the house and basically anything in between. He's shown me so many things about wrestling, again, stuff around the house, or biology. He actually taught high school biology for a year and he, he's there to answer all my obscure biology questions and considering I'm in my second year of bio, there have been a lot of obscure biology questions. My dad is a father and a friend. My cousin Chris put it best. Dan and Uncle Paul are more like friends rather than father and son. It's kind of funny, but it's true. He's always there waiting for me after those late wrestling nights, as you can see here, waiting with me, eating my dinner, and talking about my matches, giving me advice, what I did wrong, or what I could do to improve. Last week, he knew I didn't want to talk after the Hanover Park match, but I think he understands. It was a tough one. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank you, Dad, for being a friend, for waiting up late for me, lending me all these cool clothes, <laughs> inspiring me, teaching me, and for everything else you do. I cannot thank you enough. Thanks, Dad. Okay, hi everyone, my name is Max Rayline, and today I'm going to be doing a tribute speech on my dad. So, before I start this, I want to thank my dad, because he actually just fixed my collar, so <laughs> thank you dad for making me uh, look so good for this. But, um, let me start off by listing some physical characteristics. Whenever you think of someone, you think of their physical characteristics, whether it's their hair or lack of it. Their eyes, their smile, their tan skin, or maybe even a facial, facial feature, maybe even like a mustache. But with those physical characteristics come personal characteristics tied with them, like their honesty, their hard work and determination in any goal they set for themselves, or that to help others with their goals who are having trouble getting them. Obviously, I'm talking about my dad, Mike Dreyer. My dad is very special in my life. Me and him have a very unique and dynamic relationship, and it's helped me in every way possible, both practical and personal. My dad grew up in a very unique situation. Out of everyone here, most of us can say that we all have one strong father figure in their life. Well, my dad, he had two. My dad's birth father, Mike Dreyline, yes, Mike Dreyline, was a very successful businessman. He taught him every way, everything he knew about the business, how to make deals, how to work with people, etc. His stepfather, Nick Stavola, was his home dad. He was his baseball and basketball coach, and he taught him how to be a successful father, how to work with people, and how to have successful personal relationships with people. Both were very different people. However, my dad is who he is today because of them. He took his business side and became very successful on Wall Street for 20 years, and now is very successful at Deutsche Bank. And he learned that from his, uh, his birth father. However, the long relationships that he has with every single person he meets comes from his uh, stepfather, Nick Stabola, and that's what makes my dad whole as a person. My dad also puts others in front of his own, others' needs in front of his own. If any of you have gone to nine o'clock mass at St. Vincent's, you would recognize my dad. My dad is the head usher there, and to some other families, he's known as the lollipop man. So that nickname came from my dad standing at the back of mass. He was making sure that everything went smooth. And then at the nine o'clock mass being the children's mass, sometimes there would be a small kid or child who would start crying in the middle of mass. My dad would go to the rectory, grab a lollipop, bring it back, and give it to the child to make sure that not only was he having he or she having an okay time at mass, but he wanted to make sure that everyone around them was having a good time. And this overall experience really describes my dad. 
My dad is also the runner of the clothing drive at St. Vincent's because my dad wants to make sure that everyone has a great experience in their life. My dad, you'll see him running around town twice a year, putting up signs in different stores to make sure that people get out to this worthy cause. All these activities aside though, he makes sure that he's a good father and wife to his two, uh, three kids, my, me, my two brothers, and my mom. He makes sure that he's there at every sporting event, musical event, or miscellaneous whatever. He's there. Personally, he was my baseball coach from T-ball all the way till ninth grade, and my basketball coach from third to eighth grade. And right now, he's unofficially my track coach. Yelling from the stands at every single meet, telling me what I need to do before, during, and after my races. He's there every meet, yelling me, guiding me, he's there every time. Finally, I wanna talk about the unique relationship I have with my dad. As you can tell, we are very similar. I mean, we also, we both have really cool facial hair, so that's that. But my dad and I are also very similar personally. We have a very unique relationship. Sometimes I call it a hot, cold relationship, but I've grown so much because of this. Being able to work with someone who is almost exactly like you has helped me grow so much and develop as a person. Sometimes we'll be arguing about something that we totally agree on, and then the next day we'll be best friends. I'm so fortunate to get the experience from someone that I am so similar with and to grow as a person. Finally, I'd like to say that I'm so privileged and honored to be the son of Mike Dreitlein. And, and in my life, I want to strive to be half the father he is to me, to my own kids. Dad, I love you. Thank you. So, this final slide, I, was, I, I, I just put a work cited because I really was just used to doing it. And I really realized that I couldn't have a work cited, so I found some of these doodles that my dad drew in 1978 and put them up there. So, enjoy. Okay, hello, my name is Fiona Keen, and today I wanna to talk, to talk to you guys a little bit about my dad. So, you guys have all been to the movies, right? So when I was younger, my dad used to take me to these action movies, like your typical guns, bombs, explosions. Like my mom wasn't too happy about that, but it was a bonding time for me and my dad. So I would leave the theater and I'd be kind of unaffected by like the actors in it. It was the same storyline. It was the heroic figure trying to save the distressed citizens. And like, it seemed kind of fake to me. So I'd turn to my side and I'd see my dad. And he'd be standing there and I'd think, wow, like my dad's the hero of my life's movie. So that's a little bit cheesy, but like, I don't know, this is what would go through my head. And so my dad, a little bit about him. He was born in Salt Coast, Scotland. So it's a small coastal village town on the west coast of Scotland. And when I was doing this, when I was writing my speech, I asked him, what was there to do? Like, how was your childhood? And he told me that all that was there was the windy, rough seas and continued to say that nothing much else has changed since then. So he didn't have the most traditional upbringing. His parents got divorced when he was young, about four, and they both got remarried and had kids. But he always stayed close to his brother and his mom. So. After he finished high school in Scotland, moved to America with his brother, and they lived with his uncle. He found a job at an investigations and property claims company, and worked there for a while. He was pretty successful there, but decided that in 2006, he wanted to start his own business. So he left the company and started his own business, which has been successful ever since. So recently he decided to start another business. He found an interest in HVAC and went, studied, and passed the test to get his license for it and started another business. And now he successfully runs two businesses. And this makes me really proud of him. 
because he never let getting a college education stop him, not getting a college education stop him. And although he told me when I was writing this speech that I shouldn't put that in there because he wants people to think that he's the smartest, got everything he wanted, but I know that he puts everything into my education because he wants me to get everything that he never had. So, um, he's not only has a passion for furthering his own education, but has a talent for balancing business and family. So, he's always there for me. He comes to all my games, even though I might not play in all of them. He is always there to give me the pre-game pep talk or the post-game recaps. He was even there for me my freshman year. I came home and I proclaimed that I wanted to do winter track, even though I had never run a day in my life and I hated running. So I told him that I also wanted to do the turkey trot that year to get ready for track. Well, he said that he would do it with me, even though he's never run a day in his life. And well, the morning of the race, we decided to sleep in a little bit, and um, we missed the race. But he said if I wanted to go to Geralda and run around Geralda, that he would come with me. So I don't know if you could call it a run, it was that slow, but he was there for me the whole time, and we finished it without ever stopping. And that's what I admire about him, but I admire the most is that he is always open-minded. Like, He'll think about what he's doing before he acts on it, and will always think things through and analyze it. So this is the one most, the, the one of the most valuable life lessons he's taught me, because I can take this throughout college, the rest of my life. And he not only stresses to be open-minded, but stresses that I form my own opinion based on knowledge I acquire while taking into account other people's point of views to understand how they're thinking. So he does this, he teaches me this like a lot of ways, but one story that really stuck out to me was one year we were down the shore and we were at this little seafood restaurant and we we're watching this woman drill, drill into oysters. And I turned to him and I said, have you ever had oysters? Like, I don't know, they look a little gross. And he's like, no, he's not a big seafood person, but he decided to order a whole tray of them so that we could both try some and formulate our own opinions about oysters. So, although I don't think I'll ever want oysters again, um, and he probably doesn't want to eat oysters again, we both got to formulate our own opinions and he's taught me this daily. So I wanted to do my tribute speech on my dad today because he teaches me daily that I should stay open-minded, do what I love, and try new things. And although he could never be a stand-up comedian, never went to college, and never works out, he's the strongest, funniest, and smartest man I know. Thank you. Okay, hi guys, my name is John Jim Borges, and I'm gonna be talking about one of my favorite teachers here at the high school, Miss Nellum. Um, and so, we're all seniors here. We've all been through our four years at MHS. We're all going to go to all places around the country. And, you know, being here at MHS, we've definitely gotten ready for college. We're ready for the outside world. And there's always, everyone has their certain teacher that they've gotten along with better than others, or they just really connect with. And there's definitely people that have made your time here at MHS more meaningful, more worthwhile. Um, here, well, personally, I feel like we've all noticed two very kinds of English teachers, because English teachers, you can either, it's kind of a hit or a miss sometimes. <laughs> um, there's the kind of teacher that, for lack of a better word, somewhat boring, or they try their best to make sure you get the topic, or you always stay on track, or you understand whatever you're reading, or want to, want to, want to study. But then, they just can't really hit the mark. They just don't capture the class, or they just don't totally get the vibe of the students they're teaching. And then there's also the other type of English teacher, the ones that make a lifelong impression, the one that use their wit, humor, and insight to always keep the students um, involved, ready to learn, and eager about what they're actually reading. For me, Miss Nellens um, was this English teacher. She was this teacher who, with her wit, humor, and insight, 
made me look at English as not just another boring, acquired class as like as I used to feel, but instead she she made it feel more as a welcoming space, a great way to start the morning with her witty NPR jokes or just jokes in general, <laughs> um, and just her outside stories would always make the class feel a lot more like home. So because of this, Miss Nellen is my favorite teacher and she deserves recognition. In her class, you would always definitely get more than what you would expect from just taking a required English course. If it was debating whether Romeo and Juliet really were great or if they were just doing stupid things, or if it was just talking about Lord of the Flies and how everything means something else and you don't totally understand, Miss Nellen was always there to kind of talk about whatever you wanted in the book and she always makes sure you got whatever you believe, and then you also got to hear her point of view as well. Um, so let me just explain what a normal, typical day in Ms. Nellen's class would involve. So you walk in, she might be a little late sometimes, <laughs> um, always running in with her backpack that says Nellen's on the back. Um, and then it's usually like this, we all sit down, we get our stuff out, Miss Nellen lays out the class plans for that day somehow. We start to get to work and then we get off on a tangent and Miss Nellens tells another great story which somehow, you're not sure how, but it just ends up making the lesson a lot more worthwhile, a lot more enriched. And somehow you got to a point where the book was more enticing because of the story. And, and so I was, I had the pleasure of having Miss Nellens as a teacher my freshman and, soft, and junior year. So in a way, you could say like she was my teacher when I was coming into this new environment and when I was also melting down my junior year <laughs> with all the work and everything we had to do junior year. But definitely, as Sydney said, period three English 11 was one of my favorite courses because I could always count them, I, was, I could always count Miss Nellens for brightening up my morning, telling a funny joke, or just noticing something and finding it really funny even though we didn't. <laughs> um, Another thing I really respect about Ms. Nellens is that even though, for instance, I'm not the greatest writer, I don't believe myself to be, but beside, even because of this distinction, she didn't give me any less attention. She gave every one of her students the same attention. She always cared about them equally, and if she saw where you had flaws, she would work with you to make them better. Then she would always make sure you got a lot more than just <coughs> reading a book and somewhat understanding it. Miss Nellens isn't the kind of teacher, as I just said, that would ignore you or just let you like go by without understanding the topic or the novel. She would work with you. She would go the extra mile to make sure you understood what you were learning and just really got your thoughts out. And she made sure that even in a group discussion, you still had time to talk and get your point out no matter what. She made you respect the novels you read. It's not just like pages and just books, more like you saw the story within and what they actually meant. Um, she was always positive, always very humorous, no matter what, every class always involved a great story, it was always memorable. Sometimes I feel I remember more the stories than the books, but it's, it's always a great thing. Um, and I feel Ms. Nellens learns a lot from her students as well, not just us from her. You can tell she definitely remembers students from whom she had in seventh grade, and she remembers those experiences. She really cares about her students, and she makes it so very visible. And I'd like to thank her for making a great friendship between me and Sydney. If it wasn't for that, her class, junior year, freshman year, I wouldn't be friends with her, I wouldn't be making these speeches today. There's just something about the environment in her course that just makes it so welcoming, inviting, open, friendly. And soon we're all gonna be leaving. I'm gonna be, who knows, across the country. No, who knows by now. And I'd just like to thank Ms. Nellens for teaching with dedication and the, her main goal was to always spread love through the class and through the courses. And so yeah, for that I'd like to thank her and for all her endless tireless work and everything she's done for the school and all of her students. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Brian Kraska and today I'll be talking about my mother Linda. I've known my mom for quite a while, almost 18 years now. Um, let me tell you a little bit about her. She has been living now a while at the self-acclaimed age of 29 years old. She's a very accomplished horseback rider, a professional multitasker, and an extreme chocolate advocate. 
Well, now let me tell you a little bit about her background as a kid. She moved around a lot as a kid because her father was a high executive at Merrill Lynch. So she was born in the Philadelphia suburbs, then she moved briefly to Washington State, back to the Philadelphia suburbs in Allentown, and then finally she moved to Buffalo, New York for her high school years. After high school, she attended um, Endicott College, a junior college for two years, and then went to St. Anselm College, where she received a bachelor's degree in economics. She then worked at Merrill Lynch briefly, like her father, until then moving to Boston to be a salesperson for a new technological advancement of the late 80s, computers. She was a saleswoman for computers for seven years until being promoted to be the first female manager of her company, where she served as manager for three years. She was one of the best managers that her firm has ever seen, according to her. And she always conveys her sales knowledge to me, my sisters, and her persistence throughout her life. One example of my mom's extreme persistence was a couple years ago we went to Disney and we got off the airport at around 12 o'clock and she always gets a gift for my sisters whenever we go on vacation without them. So she made this one gift shop open up again for five more minutes at midnight when these workers clearly wanted to go home. She searched the entire store for 10 minutes and walked out of there with two pencils that were less than a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> She's always been on top of me for everything I do, especially in my um, work as a Boy Scout and my college applications. She's done a lot for me there. Over the years, I've learned that my mom is very well liked by everyone she meets. Everyone, everywhere we go, tell us that she's a riot, she's the life of the party, and she's a great time. Well, I also witnessed this on our Narragansett trip. The cousins and I, my mom and her sisters, were up one night. The adults were drinking, and we were playing card games. And then my cousin played a popular song at the time. My mom proceeded to stand on her chair, wave around her sweater, and scream <laughs> like a young girl. And everyone just taken by her enthusiasm and even the choirs and bones. So my, my mom was pretty funny like that. So one of the best qualities of my mom is she's very family driven. Um, as a kid I loved trucks and she never failed to stop on the side of the road, let me watch a construction site, stopping whatever obligation she had that day, just enjoy some moments with me as I watched something I loved. She also realized as a kid that all my friends were athletic and I was anything but. So she proceeded to teach me every sport I knew, even though she didn't know them herself, but she wanted me to be the best athlete that I could be, even though she didn't even know the sports. Um, and my childhood was tough for her because whether I knew it or not, when I was four years old, her mother passed away. And right before I was seven years old, her father passed away. And I knew that was tough for her and she just, she kept pushing through because she knew that her kids needed her, for, needed her to be there for them and she couldn't skip a beat because she was selfless and she put her family before her needs. And then when finance got tough a couple years ago, she went back to work to provide for her family. Um, she became an assistant teacher at a local Montessori school with little experience, but as always she put her best foot forward and got to work. Um, now she's one of the best teachers there. Um, the experience faded, and the inexperience faded, excuse me, but the nine hour commitment a day never did for her. And I knew it was tough for her, especially then. She just took on so many responsibilities between work, providing for the family, cooking meals, and just being the best mother possible. She would, she extended her bedtime to 2 a.m., always got up before 8 a.m., but never complained, always kept a beautiful smile on her face. Um, and she never stopped being the epicenter of our family, the extended family, um, and she single-handedly provided for all of us financially, emotionally, and lovingly. And she's the driving force behind the success of my sisters and I. <clears throat> and she never let it show how much it hurt her or how much stress she was going through. And that's one of the most selfless things I've ever seen. Um, finally, my mom, she always tells us all the dreams she had, but whether or not she knows it, she's fulfilled every single one of them. 
Um, she always said she wanted to be a nurse, but she is. She's diagnosed every single one of my illnesses. She's treated every single one of them and told me exactly what to do for them. Um, she wishes she was a better chef. And um, she's taught herself everything she knows about cooking, whether how little that might be, but she's done the best she could. Um, she also tells me she wanted to be a guidance counselor, but she was the best guidance counselor in the world between my college process and my sisters. And she also kept her saleswoman attitude throughout her entire life and just always was persistent, got everything she wanted out of us. She often persuaded me to do whatever she wanted me to do. And most importantly, she's a hero. She's done so much for me and just my family. I wouldn't be anywhere I am without her. And she's my role model and I'd be lucky to be half the person she is one day. Um, Mom, you're the most amazing person I know. Everyone adores you. Everyone of my friends who meets you just loves you and they say that you're the best. So, um, as you always told me to say as a kid, to whoever told me they love me, I'd say sorry, but my heart belongs to my mom. I love you, Mom. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Jeffrey, and today I'm giving a tribute speech about my mom, Grace. When I was nine years old, I was a boy who hated school, never listened to in classes, and failed the math class. <laughs> I, yet my mom gradually changed me with her endless patience positive attitude, and valuable guidance. The point I'm trying to make is, I was once one of the, I was once one of the most unpleasant, rude, <laughs> and undisciplined student that a teacher can possibly meet. <laughs> and I might still be like that, if it's not because of my mom. When I was nine, I had some trouble learn, uh, sitting still and learning new things. And my mom, with her endless patience, changed me and helped me get over it. Here's an example that I find really special. I was really annoyed by writing essays because I hated sitting still for hours and writing composition. Due to lack of focus, I often sit there for hours without writing a single word. <laughs> and after I finally got my essay down, my mom would look at it and say it was terrible. <laughs> so I would have to redo it. Yet every time, my mom will tell me what I did right and what I did wrong. This cycle could last for several days. <laughs> but because of my mom, I became a better writer. Not only is she a really patient mom, she also has a really positive attitude. As I mentioned before, I was not so successful at learning. And for most of the tests, I got a really bad grade, <laughs> and uh, instead of being mad at me, she encouraged me, and she uh, she encouraged me, and gave me lots of confidence, <coughs> which was really significant as I grew up. Besides constantly inspiring me, my uh, my mom's positive attitude also changed the, changed the way I look at things. I was not a really positive person. I would smash the racket if I lost a tennis game. I would even be mad at my teammates sometimes. But my mom encouraged me to look at the good side of everything and enjoy my games. My mom also provided me with valuable guidance. 
uh, rather than making decisions for me, she encouraged me to make decisions for myself and taught me to evaluate consequences. As a student who often ignored rules and disciplines, uh, she showed me the direct connection between a bad decision and a bad outcome. <coughs> she made me realize the importance of doing the right things. Gradually, I started doing things that are more valuable to me, like uh, reading more books. She's the best and the wisest human being I have ever known. In the end, I want to say that I was a kid who dismissed the instructions that my teacher provided to me, unaware of the rules and disciplines, uncomprehending the, the advice that my parents gave me. I was a ridiculous student who redeemed only by my mom's endless patience, positive attitude, and valuable guidance. In educating me, she conferred, uh, she conferred value on it. It's a currency that I do not know how to spend. Today I'm standing here, and I would like to say to my mom, I will never let you down, and I have a lifetime I had to prove that. Thank you. My name is Jenny Scavoni, and I'm going to be doing a tribute speech about my dad. So when you hear the words football, beach, country music, ribs, and a nice cold lemonade, what do you think of? Probably nothing, but that makes me think of my dad. My dad had to work from the ground up to get to where he is today, and he still managed to be there for our family and raise three hectic kids. When people first see my dad, they think of him as some big, scary guy, but in reality, he's just a big softie who loves to have fun. And by having fun, I mean pulling pranks on all of our family and friends and making jokes to everybody. For example, he hides a plastic turtle around our house just so he can scare my aunt and uncle when they stay over. He's always reaching near me and getting into my personal space because he knows it annoys me. He goes like, oh, I'm just reaching for my phone or I'm just scratching my head like right next to me just because he knows it really annoys really me. He ruined my cousin's nice family picture by tackling all of them into the pool, including their puppy, just because he thought it would be funny. <laughs> then he proceeded to ruin our own family photo by putting his hand over my face, yet again because he thought it would be funny. And you can always count on him trying to trip our family friends as they're walking down the aisle to receive communion in church. Basically, he's just nuts. But behind all the jokes and the laughs, he is a hardworking, perseverant man. Big Bill, or Big Poppy as we like to call him, grew up in Springfield, Massachusetts with his mom, dad, and two older brothers. There wasn't really much for him in Springfield, so he had to work really hard to succeed. My dad played football and baseball in high school and then was recruited to play Division I football at Boston College. There he got an incredible education and met my mom. He eventually left Massachusetts after his five years at Boston College. He got his master's, that's why he was there for five years. And he left Massachusetts to go follow my mom and be with her in New Jersey. And there he only went, he only went to New Jersey with a business degree, a bag of clothes, a $300 car that would break down in the rain, nothing to his name, and there was no job lined up for him there. But he still had a positive outlook on life. He eventually got a job at a coupon company, working with my uncle. Then after a year or two there, he worked at MasterCard. And then he went back to working at a coupon book company. Now, you guys probably don't know what a coupon book company is. I don't know what a coupon book company is. So let's just go with it. His coupon book company then got sued. And they won the lawsuit, but they eventually lost the company because they put so much time and money into the fight. He then went to work for Jackson Hewitt, which is an insurance company, for about five or six years. And now he works at White Group Realtors as the head of the franchise department. Now, my dad had to work really hard to get where he is today, and he still managed to be the best dad ever. Everything my dad does is for the family. He's essentially the glue that holds my family together. People think it's my sister, but it's not. It's him. And these are some reasons why. 
every single morning. He wakes up an hour earlier than he has to, just so he can make me and my brother breakfast before school. He's been to every single volleyball game and tournament of mine, even if that means he has to leave work early. He's always telling me and my siblings to get off our phones and to actually talk to each other. He's the party king of the household, meaning that he loves to have people over and bring our family and friends together. He's always giving me and my siblings life lessons, even when we were younger. He would always say, Scavone's always, and me, Will, and Christina would have to answer, hustle, to ensure that we would always do everything with 100% effort. And nowadays, he just turns every little funny story I have into some sort of life lesson. Like a couple months ago, I decided to tell him that I love tap, as I like to call it, my car against the wall behind Bagel Chateau. And he didn't yell at me, he just proceeded to teach me that next time I park on an angle, know that the right side of the car is going to hit before the left. Now, I'm so grateful for everything he's done for me, and I know that he's still going to be able to give me life lessons and to do all this stuff for the rest of my life. When I asked my dad about his past in the business world for this project, actually, I asked him if what he was doing now is his passion, and he said yes and no. I asked him what he wanted to do with his life, and he said he didn't know. See, my dad continues to give me life lessons without him even knowing it, because him telling me at 49 years old that he still doesn't know what he wants to be when he grows up just gives me a lot of hope and reassurance for myself. So Big Bill is the rib cooking, football playing, beach chilling, country music listening, nice cold lemonade drinking man, who has been an even better dad than I could have asked for. Thank you. Um, so my name is Elizabeth Timmons, and I'm giving a tribute speech on my dad. His name is Steve. He's on the far left. And I'm going to talk about why I love him so much and why he is the most amazing father. Um, so first things first, I'm a triplet. And that being said, it's probably not easy for my dad to experience raising three teenage girls, um, all of our own experiences. Um, but he has taught me invaluable lessons that I will never forget and instilled in me values that are so important for my success and my future. Um, and he has devoted his entire life to our success and is doing everything he can to make sure that we grow up to be happy and successful. Um, so who is my dad? Um, so. These are two pictures of him, and right there, that's my dog Riley, and my dog Riley absolutely adores my dad. We'll follow him around everywhere, and since getting my dog about a year ago, I've seen a whole new side of him. Like, really, really loving, and um, so like, funny, something that like I've never experienced having a dog before, so him, seeing him have a new friendship, and another, um, not necessarily a guy in the household, but someone that he can do sports with and stuff. Um, it's really cool. And also he's just a really funny guy. If you look on the right, um, that's his birthday this year. And that's actually his real smile. Um, and it's just like, pretty funny. He's uh, a very literal guy. Um, he's the most smart and caring person I know. Um, and he's into baking, cowboy movies, Sherlock Holmes. He's very handy. Um, and even though sometimes he has tough love, it's all for the best. Um, so hard work pays off. And I learned this from my father alone. Um, so he was born in New York State. And after his father dying, when he was about 14 years old, he moved to Montana with his brother. Um, he was only 15 at the time, and living with his brother alone, practically raised himself. Um, and he had to work as a newspaper paper delivery boy, and lay bricks and random jobs to start preparing to pay for college, and worked all throughout the night to go to high school during the day, something that all of us probably will never understand or can even grasp the idea of that. Um, 
So after that, he took a year off from college, I mean, from in between high school and college, and worked to raise money so he could just go to college. And he went to Montana State University, where he graduated um, Outstanding Senior of the Year, and didn't go to his graduation because he was already on to the next job. Um, and even though I haven't realized it um, until writing this speech, he really is the most smart, genuine person. And anytime I need help with math, pre-cal, physics, anything you name it, he has an answer for it. And I've never seen him get a problem wrong. Um, something he studied 30 years ago, he still knows today. It's pretty crazy. Um, so these are the jobs that he's done. And these are just a few of them. And if you look on the bottom right, you'll see that's the Hudson um, plane crash, which I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, a plane crashed into the Hudson River about two years ago. And my dad's company took that out of the water. On the far right, that's the roller coaster that was in the sea at Seaside Beach after Hurricane Sandy, and he helped take that out of the water. So he works in marine construction, and he's an engineer. And on the top left, that's the Orsund Bridge, which is in Sweden. And I think that's pretty cool if you just look how long it is. But on the far right, that's a bridge that's seven miles long, which is actually insane. You're just driving for seven miles over water. And he helped um, work on that in Nova Scotia. And his life has taken him all over. I've only been out of the country twice. Meanwhile, he's lived in Sweden, Denmark, Thailand, Taiwan, which is pretty crazy. Um, I've been to Mexico and Aruba. So I really think that this is a really big deal. I want to live all over. And I've always been really jealous of that. And when he tells me his stories and the jobs he's worked on, I'm always so jealous. So these are some pictures. That's when we went zip lining um, in Montana. And he absolutely loves Montana. And we go back every two years. That's him riding a horse, one of his favorite hobbies. And that's him smiling on the right. Um, so some lessons that he's taught me are to be responsible. Um, and that includes taking care of my sisters. And even though I'm only a year older, I mean, a minute older, oh my god, <laughs> a minute older, and two minutes older, um, he has instilled in me that I need to make sure I'm doing everything I can for my sisters and watching over them because in the future, I need to be close to them. They're going to be my best friends my whole life. Um, and he's still really close with his siblings. He has five um, brothers and one sister. And he is still close to them today. <laughs> he calls them up several times a week. And I think that's a really cool thing. Um, he's also taught me how to cook. I know how to do pretty much every chore there is, which I'm not always happy about, but I know that I will be set up for the future. And most importantly, he's taught me how to work hard to be successful. And even with study skills, putting the number on the page, putting my name, he has always made sure that I'm completely organized and set up so that I can never really fail, even though I probably have. But um, he really is looking out for us. And one very important thing that I want to talk about is how dedicated of a husband and father he is. Um, he works in Massachusetts right now from Monday to Thursday, just so that when my parents move up to Massachusetts, they're already set up for the future so that he won't have to be looking for a job when we move up there. And every time he comes home, because he works three days there and comes home every single week, he says how much he misses us. And that's uh, something that I really... languages 
<laughs> and their accents and makes their life so miserable. And it is so funny. And in the middle of dinner, they'll call and said, you know, you call in the middle of my dinner. Um, and they're totally trying to scam him and take his money. And he makes their life much harder. And it is very, very, very funny. Um, and that's just one kind of person. He's, he's a very quirky, like weird person. But he is also the best dad that I could ever have. Um, so overall, uh, thank you for hearing about my dad today. Um, he has instilled in me values and through his experiences have sh has shown me the wisdom that he has and the skills that I need for the future. And I cannot be more grateful and hope that I have a close relationship even though I'm going to college. <laughs> thank you. My name is Will Scavone and I am uh, honoring my mother today. My mother, where do I begin? She's the one where I get my cleverness from. She's the one to tell me what's right from wrong, even if it takes me a couple tries to know what's right. She's the one to tell me to clean my room five times a day. And as you can tell, she's the one where I get these extremely good looks from. My mom is the absolute best and deserves to be honored. Many kids tell their mom that they're the mom of the year and they won the mom of the year award. But what my mom is, she did win that award. She wins it every year. My mom grew up not too far from here in Livingston, New Jersey, where, she, where her and her brother lived. She was a crazy teenager, just like us, in high school. And then she ended up going to her dream school, Boston College, where she met my father. At home, my mom has to deal with a lot of things in her everyday life. Especially when she has to deal with me and my sisters fighting all the time. Which, might I say, is getting lesser and lesser by the day, but it's still tough to handle. My mom solves most of my problems, and I'm very grateful for that. Sometimes I do feel bad for my mom around the house. Especially with my cats. My cats throw up a lot, might I say. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say they throw up a lot, because they did. And she's usually the one who ends up having to clean it up every single time. Especially when, especially when I'm home alone, too. I'll be watching TV on the couch, and the cat will throw up right next to me, and I'll just ignore it the whole time until my mom comes up. She'll be like, Will, why didn't you clean it up? And I'll be like, Mom. I'll say the same excuse every time. Mom, I never saw it. But she, she never buys it, and she ends up cleaning it up. My mom probably understands me the best out of anyone I know. Probably because we are very alike. Me and her share the same deathly fear of spiders. <laughs> um, especially when my dad's not home I'm, and there's a spider in the house, my mom usually comes up to me every time and says, Will, this is where you man up and you gotta kill a spider. <laughs> but I tell her, I say, Mom, you know how this is gonna come, how the outcome's gonna be. And you guys probably know too. My mom ends up killing it. <laughs> My mom is like my best friend. She's always there for me, no matter what situation I get myself into. She, over my 14 year career of playing sports or doing something, my mom has barely missed an event I took place in. She's very dedicated and she hates when she has to miss one of my events. She's, she's my number one fan in everything I do and it means a complete world to me. Mom, oh. My mom likes to show me how to have fun in life. As I said, she was a crazy teenager in high school and in college. I could, I could prove it to you guys, but I'll share the stories for another time. My mom has taught me everything I know to this day, and she has always guided me to the right path. My mom has been a big influence on my decisions and has taught me what to value in life. She should, the, big, the biggest thing she has shown me is how important family is. And family has been such an important part of my life, and I can thank her for it every day, and I can thank her for how valuable she's shown me how, how much I love my family. My mom worries a lot. She won't sleep unless she knows I've been home, I got home safely or I made it to a friend's house safe, and she knows I'm sleeping there. I don't really show how grateful I am for how much she cares about me in that situation. Because I usually argue with her, saying I want to stay out 10 minutes later, 5 minutes later, and she's usually tired and she gets mad. But I really do care how much she worries about me and how much she cares that I'm home safely. Every time we leave the house, my mom always says, be safe, drive safe, and I love you. Even if we just got in a fight, she'll always say I love you. 
but it always puts a smile on my face walking out the door knowing how much she cares about me. My mom is my role model. I look up to her every single day wanting to be like her when, she, when I grow up. She's an incredible human being and I envy the person she has become today. She has taught me the important things in life as to always never judge a book by its cover, to be happy, and to be respectful to people. She has been one of the biggest influences on my life today. Me and my mother have a very special bond. If it's from watching HGTV, talking about the houses, if they're ugly or if we buy them, or if it's the before every single one of my hockey games where she says the same thing every single time. It's the little stuff that makes a big difference in my life. So I just want to thank you, Mom, for being the best mother a boy can ever ask for. And I'm so grateful for what you do for me every single day, even if I don't show it. Love you, Mom. Thank you.